All right. Hello, and welcome once again to Lost in Criterion. I am the Adam Glass, and always my co-host... John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. John Patrick Owatari Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> I am so Did you bad. just mispronounce my <laughs> actual last name, the one that like, you've known yes. for... Yeah, okay. Just yeah. checking. So it's not it's not a Listen, Japanese Pat, it's, issue. It's a I can't I can't talk pro, in general. Just a general pro, pronunciation yeah, issue. I uh, I have problems with my you tongue have a mental and block the words with... and they Listen, I went to college for English. What I say goes. You, this is a yeah, Here's what I'm going to say, okay? Names not English. So there you go. Ah, shoot. That's yeah. the problem. You have a block for names. I'm surprised you even say your own name right. You're like usually, I'm Adam Glace. I usually don't. Like that. It's true. Um, Is that how you introduce yourself, Adam Glaze? Adam Glaze. Because that's a pretty the, awesome name. All the time. All the time. talking about David Cronenberg, 1988, uh, psychological drama, Dead Ringers, starring Jeremy I- Irons as twin Irons gynecologists. And Jeremy Irons. <laughs> yes, starring Jeremy Irons and Jeremy Irons uh, as, as twin gynecologists. Um, and who makes a movie about gynecologists? David Cronenberg, that's who. Uh, this is <laughs> yeah, very... well, makes, a, makes a movie about gynecologists that is also a horror film. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. Uh, well, it's My supposition, David Cronenberg... Cronenberg, not Cronenberg. See, see, I'm not the only one. Yeah, you're right. Um, so possibly a misogynist. Actually, what I what I in my notes, I have 1988 David Cronenberg psychological drama starring Vagina. Jeremy Irons as twin gynecologists. I wrote that sentence before hitting play. I may regret this one. Is is what my, what my notes actually say? <laughs> um, uh, I really uh, to get to get into this. It's kind of based on a true story. Um, and very, very, very loosely based on, actually very loosely based on a book called Twins, which itself was very loosely based on, on the, the actual... Arnold Schwarzenegger film. No, no, not the Arnold Schwarzenegger oh, film. It was the inspiration for the Arnold Schwarzenegger film. No. Really? No, it wasn't. Oh. It wasn't at all. That's a lie. No, uh, the that, book... this, this film got way more interesting just because of that. <laughs> the book, the book is about a, uh, uh, also identical twin gynecologists who were found, uh, decomposing uh, in their New York City apartment, um, they having shared everything, uh, including a, a very bad barbiturate habit. Uh, so once again, we get a movie about people abusing drugs, uh, which, which last We're week... We're getting a theme. Last time, the Sid, and, Sid and Nancy. Uh, it, it, seems, it seems like a lot of our movies have little micro-themes in Cess of 3 or 4. Um, yeah, it is. It's weird. Yeah. Actually, the next movie we're talking, eh, we we talk about is Summertime, uh, in which Catherine Hepburn also does about nothing. Drugs, does yeah. n- no, does nothing but drink a lot, though. Oh um, man, yeah. She she really pounds it back. Anyway, uh, we'll get to we'll get to that. Uh, that's Her not alcoholism really alcoholism. Next, that time. at least that at least isn't a major plot point. But we'll get into that. Uh, Jeremy Irons here, twin gynecologists who eventually, uh, spoilers, sorry, uh, the one thing they do borrow from reality. Is that they both become, die together? They yeah. die together, slightly mutilated and decomposing, uh, in 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 a uh, barbiturate uh, enhanced stupor. Hooray! I guess actually, you know, in reality, the two brothers died from withdrawal more than anything. And I guess, I don't know. It's kind of withdrawal by the time they they get around. I, well, to everything. that whole thing was a little bit hard for me to follow, and that's I think one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of the film. Yeah. Is that like following who's actually still doing drugs and how much they're doing is actually really difficult that is, in this That film. is kind of difficult in this movie. Uh, what, and like I understand that that's kind of the main point, and yeah. I think the whole idea that this is supposed to be a film where you never quite sure who which you're character watching. you're looking at, yeah, is it does a great job. That's yeah. actually really well done in the film. Yeah. It's but wonderful. It's also and, extremely frustrating for somebody who's only half paying attention while yeah. trying to clean the house. <laughs> you should you should probably have paid more attention. Hey, you, um, you know what? No, I, no, even, I gotta do what I gotta do, okay? Even even watching this movie and, and paying very close attention to it, uh, it, it, it plays like that. It's very hard to tell. And you know, in a lot of movies, that would be detrimental. But in this movie... You know, it's the uh, point. It's, Beverly, yeah. Beverly and Ellie, our two brothers, 
are very much supposed to be two sides of this, and not even two sides of the same personality. They are one personality. They yeah. are not. They are not like the it's manic not even like and the schizophrenic. Depressive. They're, They're basically not, one person. Yeah, they are together. one person. And they they live their lives as one person, sharing women. Yeah, one, and, and yeah, one of them is a per, is a normal person's quiet. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, introverted. Yeah, uh, yeah, introspective yeah. side, yeah. and and then the other is the same person's outgoing part. Yeah, it's, yeah, they're one person. Yeah, they barely together make one functional human being. <laughs> Me too. Um, yeah. And, and it's very interesting. And I found the way this movie was shot to be very, you know, it very much reflects that. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of, it's all, it's all very much steady, steady shots because they have to be. But whereas in other movies that attempt this sort of thing, like The Parent Trap, uh, I mean, always, obviously The Parent Trap, <laughs> comparing The Parent <laughs> Trap to a, David, to a David Cronenberg film trap. is already is already going way, way off the path. <laughs> but imagine it as a David Cronenberg film. <laughs> that would be amazing. I don't want to. I don't want to. Like, uh, where's, the, where's the body horror in that? I really yeah. want to know. Um, no, but, but what I mean is other movies that attempt to have one actor uh, play the same role or play twins really play different roles play this eh, um don't do it nearly as well and the no, way no. the way they interact in this and obviously they had to have used stand-ins and doubles for some of the interactions um but the way they interact is so seamless so realistic that i would believe they cloned jeremy irons for this movie yeah and um, honestly if they hadn't um done that you could almost buy into a sort of like Fight Club esque. This is yeah. the exact same person who's yeah like no no that's definitely slightly schizophrenic. Yeah, and David Cronenberg. Yeah. David Cronenberg in the eighties, uh, his horror movies are are very very weird. But this is the movie he made directly after The Fly, and what The Fly did for physical decomposition, uh, this yeah. movie does for psychological decomposition. <laughs> and, and yeah, I think... and and I guess like I guess. As I, I told you before we started, I, I'm i not a huge fan of 80s David Cronenberg films in general, because I'm yeah. not a huge fan of the style, because I find yeah. unsettling films unsettling. Yeah, there's um, still some body no, horror in this Everything about movie, it but there's is very well done. Yeah, yeah. Down this to a... the last detail, I mean, like, Jeremy Irons and it is magical, practically, yeah. in his portrayal of these two people... Yeah, who are this basically is... one person. It's it's phenomenal the acting and and the, the shooting does a very good job of creeping you out with psychological deterioration. But yeah, those very same reasons why it's an excellent film are the reasons why I don't like it because <laughs> <laughs> I don't because, like films like yeah, that. You don't you don't like the style. It's not my of, cup of tea. Of movie. Yeah, I don't like zombie um, films either. Same thing. You know, it could be a yeah. great zombie film, but I don't like it. Yeah. So. No, I. Uh... Yeah, so I, I like how this is shot uh, very much. It's shot, it's shot very artistic, uh, very well. I, I can't necessarily say artistically, but it is very shot. Because well. we don't know jack about art. Yeah, I, I know exactly. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> that is yeah. so beyond what we are. Yeah, we probably now, shouldn't um, talk about. Art I did. Ever again. I did really <laughs> like the opening of this movie uh, on an artistic level. The opening credits have all these uh, sort of old anatomy woodcuts uh, that are that are displayed. Oh yeah, those are yeah. With this really light music. Um, and then we get an opening of of our two main characters. It's children, and the first line is, "You've heard about sex." I really like that scene. <laughs> yeah, that's one no, of my favorite scenes of the film. Is that, that opening perfect. of those two boys? Yeah, and it very like, much establishes. And then, and then they're like their um, autopsy or whatever, or their yeah. uh, surgery on the uh, on the yeah. plastic model, on the and plastic their, model, and their, their invention uh, of the attic uh, or whatever. Yeah, their invention of their their thing, their <laughs> their piece retractor. of machinery, their retractor. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's very, it's, it's very well shot or well done opening scene. It's very well written. It very much gets us into who these characters are as children, which, and Although it, really, it, it starts to make me wonder, is this how all gynecologists start? Maybe, maybe. That, I don't well, think so. Well, I think that's thing, one of the few, one of the things that does bother me a little bit is that like, it kind of comes off as portraying all gynecologists as pervs. Well, the only problem with that and is... And I don't think that's that an accurate this is, representation. This is the only real movie uh, besides... Uh, what's that? Dr. T and the Women. Uh, who was in that? Uh, Richard Gere, I think, I've started never that seen movie this as a film. gynecologist. Uh, it came out maybe a decade ago. Uh, but, but this and that 
are probably the only movies, uh, really the only movies I can think of, um, that that are about gynecologists. So we really we have a mission, Adam. <laughs> we need to make a gynecologist to paint gynecologists in a positive light, where they're not they they do um, good work. I mean, both of these they, movies they do God's work. Adam. Both of these movies involve gynecologists who sleep with uh, their their uh, right. That's I guess that's my their, one of my yeah, little pet peeves about the film is like. Apparent, so what both those movies do is is portray gynecologists as unethical. Doctor T and the woman right. just does it uh, in a, a sort of uh, romantic comedy sense, whereas uh, this rather one, than a this one does not. Nightmare world sense. This yeah. one does not. <laughs> so we get the we get the established. They're very analytical kids. Um, so they're they're kind of adult leading children. But by the time they're actually adults, they're child-leading adults. They, their personalities never really change from that opening scene to to what we are uh, as the adult version. Yeah, but I can I kind of like that actually because the behavior they demonstrate could only be done by somebody who's not truly emotionally developed. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, like yeah. you yeah, need certainly. basically. Man, child, man, yeah. man, children. No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not complaining about oh, okay. that because well, just, because yeah. the lack of the fact that they are you know the same person more or less. Um, they can't be completely, you know, psychologically developed really. Um, but yeah, this is this is a movie about a descent into madness. Yeah, uh, and it all it all starts uh, in their first scene as an adult. Uh, where we meet, uh, we meet our our female lead, uh, and <laughs> she's got she's got three uteruses. No, no, she has a trifurcated cervix. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, she has she has a trifurcated cervix, which gets no. very confusing. <laughs> and I'm not sure about the anatomy. I'm not. Is that a thing? I don't, I don't know, know if that's a thing. I didn't bother I'm, to look that. Time up. to look I it up. Know. God, you I'm going to see some really nasty pictures of what's going to happen. <laughs> you, go, you go Google that. Uh, trifurcated cervix. Oh, and, it totally uh, pops up without like as a as a search thing. Of course it. Does. Oh, but it's all about dead ringers. I don't think it's a real yeah, thing. No, it, it very well may not be. It seems it seems very. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's a thing that can happen, um, but it doesn't seem like a thing that that would happen often enough. To, uh, like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm not, I guess I'm not I guess I'm not, a, I'm not even. I'm, I think saying I'm sure it's a thing that can happen is overstepping where I'm Apparently you can trifurcate your teeth on a, uh, um, your premolars or something. It seems like that's something that happens. Yeah, okay. I don't I don't think it's real. Never mind. My neighbors just threw garbage into my backyard and then drove away. Go out there and trifurcate their <laughs> cervix. <laughs> I should I don't think I'll trifurcate their cervix, but uh maybe <laughs> um see that see Pat, you just you crossed the line there. <laughs> Why? I don't know what it I means. I don't. I don't know what it means either. But whatever it is, it sounds far too rapey. Yeah, um, that's true. I didn't think yeah. about it that way. Yeah. Anyway, I really like that opening scene also because they uh, they talk about uh, if humans lived in the water. Uh, yeah, they that's would have a pretty sex interesting. Like yeah, they they would. Yeah, they would. They wouldn't actually have to have the the touching sex. Yes, they wouldn't have to have the, the kind of sex where you touch, and the uh, I, I, it's not established who's who even in those those child scenes. But I have to imagine that it's it's Beverly who responds, "I'd like that," uh, and then they invite the neighbor girl to to, to, to have sex with her as an experiment in the tub. Yes, yeah, in the bathtub. That's a pr- that, that I like that kid scene. That kid scene is <laughs> great. No, it's great it's for great. an establishing shot. It's perfect. Yeah, you get everything you need to know about the characters in one quick yes. blast and then they're in college and they they've invented that retractor and everyone thinks they're so cool for it yeah <laughs> which is a really weird scene too everyone's really excited that they put themselves on the map with that except for their professor who first sees them use it who he says said, well you can never, never use work. it on real people <laughs> and then he just walks away so they meet they meet the actress and she's got uh, three cervixes um and uh, immediately uh, it devolves uh, from there. <laughs> Ellie wants to have sex with her and, and does so that night and then passes her along to Beverly, uh, who apparently would never have sex if it weren't for Ellie passing. Which is explicitly passing stated, which is yes, kind of actually not necessary, but 
No, no, it's not. It's Every not so often the, the film yeah. decides to tell us things that it didn't need to tell us, that we are all... Yeah, that we can already very yeah, much Yeah, we can assume. always just discern on our own. Yeah, yeah. But the, the um, other thing is, is I'm not sure that Beverly even needs to have sex. I'm pretty sure that Beverly is largely asexual to most yeah, of the film. No. Like, he, yeah. It would definitely, it would probably be better for his life. You know, considering, considering met, it's uh, pretty, yeah. it's pretty, you know, solidly suggested that he's not interested in, you know, that, that aspect of their life. And he's very, very happy with letting Ellie take care of all of that. Um, <laughs> that thing that doesn't need to be taken care of. <laughs> yeah. Um, Having so, sex with their patients. Yeah. It's not like part of his job description. It's not. It's not. Um, but he very much and very quickly, you know, just falls in love with uh, Claire, uh, the actress with her with her mutated uh, cervix. Um, uh, <laughs> it's 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 weird because you know the first sex scene we really have is is actually him, um, you know. And and well, Ellie says that if he if Bev doesn't take her out again, he'll do terrible things to her, you know, in, in this very you know overt sexual way. And it's it's kind of scary what he might be implying, um, considering how kind of uh, sociopathical he gets the next time we see him. When we like at the dinner scene, he's yeah. very he's very much a sociopath. <laughs> um, well, yeah, and honestly, that, they both are, but. Yeah, yeah anyway. they are in different ways, um, but at the same time, they're not—they're not outright. They're, they very much care for each other, and it's yeah. very clear in the rest of the movie that Ellie very much cares for his brother more so than he cares for any other human being, um, other than possibly himself. But yeah, but I don't think caring about yourself that much is a definition of caring about a, a human being. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, so he threatens to do terrible things to her, and then the very next thing we see is her tied up with, like, medical apparatus bondage. Um, yeah, yeah. And and it's, uh, it's, it's Ellie, uh, or uh, it's meant to be Ellie having sex with her as, as they're in that, uh, position. Her, yeah. Her with tubing, uh, tied to a bed. Um, yeah. So it's, it's very weird that, you know, he seems very unreal. Uninterested in sex, and he and his brother threatens to do terrible things to her, so so he gets into bondage almost immediately. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they they go through this, and they never Claire is never aware. How did Claire get to this gynecologist's office with not be, without being aware that the, the two twins, guys who own yeah. it are identical twins? Um, that's a really Kind of an unrealistic moment that she doesn't. Yeah, know. that she doesn't. Well, and that she doesn't find out until that scene with that lady with the crazy hat. Yeah, until her until her friend Laura tells her, she doesn't know. And but even even before that, there's hints that she knows that they're different people. Um, like well, the she first suggested time, that he's schizophrenic or something. Yeah, she suggests that he's schizophrenic. Um, but I, uh, you know, he I, she. Uh, they kiss each other, and she kind of reacts like she's not used to the taste. Like, like she knows that it's someone different kissing her uh, when we first see them. When we first see Bev and, Bev and uh, her together. Um, but at the same time, Ellie has always presented himself as being Beverly, uh, which is kind of needless unless it was some sort of his plan all along. Well, you do get the impression that he does this quite yeah. often and so that like he yeah. always tells every woman he meets that he's Beverly yeah yeah that's that's weird um, yeah it is I mean it, it, the whole thing is more disturbing the more you think about yeah. it especially when we get to the point where he he hires the twin prostitutes and has one call him Elliot and one call him yeah. Beverly yeah um he's a weird guy yeah like not not that his brother's not but, but. he's definitely the weirdest of the yeah. two, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So Claire finds out they're twins, insists on eating dinner with both of them, even though everybody, yeah, Bev tries to tries to uh, pawn it off uh, and say, "Well, you can go meet him, and, and and I'll be elsewhere." But she insists on meeting them both, and and they do, and she 
Shiva rapes them. Well, well to be fair, it. Elliot acts like a... And Elliot acts a, like a, total, a complete douche in that scene. Yeah, and then, really, she deserves to break them, so it's kind of like... Yeah. 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 She calls she calls him da- Dracula. She calls Elliot Dracula. Says it's the most dangerous, eh, most disgusting thing that's ever happened to her. And Elliot just laughs. And says, I, you know, I don't think that's true or something like that, doesn't he? Yeah, and Bev, Bev's crying. Yeah. And, uh... Well, and the, the whole thing's really sad because... We do get the impression that Beverly is becoming really, really attached to this woman and loves yeah. her. And, like, yeah. Elliot acts like an asshole and basically yeah. steals away his brother's chance at yeah. enjoying happiness. So we get a... Uh, then we they get that prize, whatever that prize is for. And uh, this is our first, our first moment where Bev feels invisible. Uh, is Elliot talking, accepting the prize, and apologizing that Beverly he's can't not be there? Here, yeah, but he is there, and he's very drunk. Um, and he takes the stage, and then tells, yells that, uh, that uh, the there, and... there's been a fraud. There's been a fraud. Uh, he's that he's uh, Elliot. Uh, he claims to be Elliot, and that the guy who was already on stage with Beverly. Um, and he makes a scene and, and then claims that he does all the work and, and Elliot is always all doing, you know, uh, less than ethical things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and Bev apologizes. Or, no, Elliot, sorry, apologizes. Yeah, Elliot so who, he's, he's, yeah, is he's drunk. actually Elliot, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's clearly been celebrating too much. And he plays it off in a way that I don't think would actually get it played off. No, um, no, that's the weird thing. Uh, and, like, everybody claps and it's like, no. No. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. David Cronenberg. This is not how this That's would go down. That's an unrealistic reaction. Sorry. Like, there should be much yeah. more gasping and upset. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some sort of investigation. Yeah. Right? Like, some sort of attempt to take away a medical license, maybe? Yeah. But that's but that the weird thing, is there apparently seems to be no medical license in this fictional universe. Well, no, there is. We get, we get yeah, to that later. Yeah, I know. We do get to that later. But, like... There, we do, but at the same time, like, it it seems like it's, n- for much of the film, it seems like it's not a serious threat. Yeah. And every yeah. doctor you meet in the real world considers it very much a threat. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, like, a little bit upsetting, like, I mean, like, he's been having sex with basically every, even semi-attractive patient that comes through the office for however many years. It seems. That's what we get the yeah. impression. Yeah, that's the and, impression. And we it's get. like, really? You still have a medical license? Are you sure about that? Yeah. You think uh you think something negative would have happened before yeah. Claire. That like Claire is clearly pretty far down the road for Yeah. This to be happening. Yeah. So that's uh, a, he that's runs a small Cla- problem I have with it. Like just He runs into Claire again while he's at some sort of uh, modern art. Selling chairs. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird place. It's a weird store. It's that's so the store you go to when you have gyne- That's the store you go to when you have gynecologist money, though. That's the kind of store you go to when it's the 80s and you have gynecologist money. Yes. No, that's certainly true. Um, so, uh, I, you know, he apologizes, um, and they, they get back together, uh, which is really weird, too, that she's... Yeah. Makes her seem... Crazier than yeah. You. I mean, it helps. It helps the. Uh, it helps the plot of the movie, but I don't know if that's a realistic reaction. Uh, I guess it depends on I, how crazy she is. So. Yeah. If I found out something like this had happened to me, I don't think I would ever want to be with either of the men involved. Well, and um, like I frankly probably would have made an effort to get to about that whole medical license myself. Yeah. Like I yeah. mean, like um, if if I found out this kind of thing. There would be legal ramifications. Yes, uh, I, think I mean so. it's it's especially since she's apparently a movie star. I I don't know. I mean, there are laws in some places about, uh, you know, misrepresenting yourself, tantam- misrepresentation uh, for sex. Um, you know, it's yeah. It's, but the other thing is, is like even a small investigation would reveal the fact that they've yeah. actually committed fraud. Yeah, yeah. They could certainly committed academic fraud. Yeah, if if he's been writing all of the papers. Yeah, he has. It seems. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of, there's a lot of problems if they're not, yeah, as two different people, they, uh, they should not have a medical license. As one different, as one person, they could. Right, yeah, the two of them actually as a single person, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Although they should also not have a medical license anymore. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, we get our, we get our first body horror right after he meets Claire again. Uh, and that's, that's... Oh, the eating of the, um... Yeah, he has that dream where they're actually connected. And they're connected very much. We get a lot of mention, starting after that, really, of, uh, the Siamese twins, uh, the, the... Oh, what were their names? Anyway, oh, I the, don't uh, know. The Bar- uh, the, the, the Barnum and P.T. Barnum. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, the P.T. Barnum Siamese twins. Uh, Chang and... Uh, I can't Let's remember. say something racist the, right now. Well, t- let's, uh, to be sure, it was racist. Oh, anyway. yeah. <laughs> Just pick a racist Chinese name, and there you go. Yeah. It would have to rhyme with Chang. Yeah. It? I'm uh, going to guess Wang. Any- I don't think it's right, but sure, let's go with it. <laughs> Um, the, po- anyway, the point is, so he is has yeah, a, that's our first really horrific scene, and that's Chang right there is when I Chang start to Aang, hate the by film. the way. What is it? Yeah. Chang and Aang. Well, oh, they're really man, only so connected. Yeah. They're really only connected by this, uh, by this, you know, small amount of... Cake? Flesh. <laughs> it kind of looks uh, like. Possibly a, uh, a crawler. It, it did. A, a little bit look like. <laughs> like a donut. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah, but that's about the time where I started to hate the film. Yeah. I'm not yeah, gonna lie; that's around the time where it took a turn towards the. Mm, I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, well, especially with Claire it's just not my biting cup of tea. through it. Yeah, that just that, that kind was, of thing is not my cup of tea. Yeah, it's the symbolic thing of Claire tearing them apart, and in, in, in as much as them being Siamese twins is symbolic for the rest of the movie, starting at that point. Yeah. really. Um, and it's it's. Suddenly, Beverly believing that they need to be separated, um, and and not realizing that which that oddly enough is a really surgery. well, and is oddly enough a very positive impulse from somebody who yeah. spent this much time so closely attached to his brother. Yeah, it's it's um, very much. Fortunately, I guess it's the drug use leads yeah. to him believing he actually needs to cut them apart. Phys- yes, physically cut them apart. Yeah, yeah the uh, the fact that that. Uh, that also coincides with his increased use of barbiturates. Um, especially, the, it's very it's very shortly after that, the only time we see him actually physically opening the bottle, uh, he's prescribed those barbiturates to himself. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Especially, uh, again, I mean, cons- probably, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not sure, I'm not sure a pharmacist would fill that order. I don't think they uh, would. But I'm not sure why he doesn't just put it in his brother's name. Because that would that would work just as well. Yeah, I mean it would still be fraud and illegal, but at least that way it, it's not. It's possible. It's not very on its surface illegal. Um, but yeah, uh, and she leaves. And oh well, and the he, weird thing is, is that like wasn't the, and to me like this is around a time I'm pretty sure where like there was a lot of cases of, um, like about the government cracking down on doctors. Using their doctorness to to <laughs> to take illegal substances. I'm pretty sure this is around, yeah. and I guess that could be part of the inspiration for the film in itself. Is the fact yeah. that that was a yeah, huge a... matter at that time in the United States. I think, um, but yeah, it's amazing that uh, any pharmacist would say, "Yeah, sure, have these barbiturates that has nothing to do with your gynecologist practice." Yay! Everybody loves barbiturates. Yeah. So. Who doesn't? Me. And on that note, no, I'm just Johnny Ryan. Yeah, there you go. All right. So where anyway. were we in this film? <laughs> so she leaves, and he slips further into madness with her not being there. Oh as he yeah, that destroys him. That that part's yeah. actually pretty. I I found that part pretty well acted and interesting, as he really oh, yeah. just cannot no, deal think... with the fact that she's gone. And that, I thought that the was whole really movie's good. very well. It acted. is a very well acted, very well acted film. Acted I just I I liked that part. I thought that was really well done. Yeah, I never Jeremy Irons, given what he's done recently, doesn't really pop into my head as a great actor. But <laughs> yeah, he, uh... he really is. He really is. But yeah, I think uh, the only thing that really pops what pops into my mind when I think Jeremy Irons isn't isn't him being a good actor. It's him being the uh, leader of the Morlocks 
in uh, the uh, the Time Machine movie <laughs> that came out in like 2002. Oh, wow. That's a weird yeah. one to pick, Adam. I know, right? <laughs> that's uh, but that's that's like the only thing I think about him. Um, and you know, he's he's obviously he's in a lot of very good stuff. Um, and I'm sure he's very good in all of it. But I don't think about him being a good actor because no, it's so, I mean, uh, that's such a ridiculous movie. <laughs> yeah, and I think what really is like his how often he appears in TV shows is one of the big problems. <laughs> Yeah. So. Yeah. For me. But, but anyway. Oh, anyway. I, I'll tell you, I don't actually think about this, but now that I'm looking at his, uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize he was in the dungeon, the 2000s Dr- Dungeon and Dragons film. Yes. Yeah. I, that's the other thing that, uh, I that I have a problem that. with. And you think, you think there'd be uh, other stuff I would think about, you know, where, he's, where even when it's cheesy, he's actually a decent actor, like uh, like Die Hard with a Vengeance. Yeah, he's yeah. At least he's good in it, even though he's being a, a German for no reason. Yeah, <laughs> he does a good job. Yeah. He plays a good yeah. evil German. Yeah, because all evil Germans have British accents, right? So and, they, and they're all named Gruber. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ah, uh, Gruber. <laughs> Actually, all right. Yeah, no, let's stop talking about Jeremy Irons before this goes, gets any worse. He, he's a he's a great actor, and it it really shines through. Yes, he does an excellent uh, job in this film. In his descent into madness. Yeah, that particular movie. part I as, really enjoyed. Yeah, as Bev is descending into madness, Ellie is feeling more and more, I think, responsible in a way because he starts he starts abusing Barichowitz as well. Um, and he says, I, I think he says uh, they have to get synchronized. He yeah, starts doing yeah. that because because they got a match. Because Bev, yeah. Bev and I have to be synchronized. Um, but that, that and, just plays uh, into the fact that Elliot is a madman. Yeah, much more so, as, in my opinion, than Beverly. Like Elliot, yeah. like takes this situation and really does the one most craziest thing he could do in it. Yeah. Because again, yeah. like as his girlfriend in that time points out, is like he doesn't have to ruin his life. Yeah, he is successful, and that, yes, he owes his success to his brother, but nobody has to know that. Like he could go on being successful, but yeah. and and I understand he feels responsible for his brother, but that's one of the parts that I find a little bit unrealistic is the way he reacts to this situation. Yeah, instead of getting him help, yeah. he tries to. He tries to mirror and, it. And I can understand certain parts where he says, like, well, at the beginning, like, when he first... I can't remember what part of the film it is. I get a little bit turned around about some of it, but where he tries to clean him up himself. Like, that's understandable. You're a yeah. doctor. You don't want people to know that your brother's a drug addict. So you try to clean yeah. your brother up by yourself. But then the weird part is when he can't clean him up, he... He, just, he yeah. basically he jumps him, in feet, yeah, feet first into, a, into the madness. And it's like, well, I don't know about that. Probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, one, I don't know that it's a really realistic portrayal of a human being. Yeah. But. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, it's. But maybe, yeah, maybe twins are no. weird, I don't know. Maybe. We should ask identi- the Starkey uh, You just, you just don't understand. Well, they're not identical. No, but they're still See, twins. That's the problem. I assume that they yeah. share all thoughts. And, and, and drug habits. Thank you for making reverence to uh, guys we knew in high school who neither of us have talked to for uh, for a decade. Yeah, well, I was hoping, just in case they're listening. Okay. okay. That's, all, that's, that's for you guys. Hooray. They're good guys. Neither of them has a drug <clears throat> habit, I promise. I, I can't actually say that for certain. Oh. Uh. I don't want to. I don't want to imply that they do. But yeah, I, well, I I, that's why I said it, it because I realized that that kind of yeah. sounded like I was implying they did. Okay, let's not talk about the Starkey <laughs> twins anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adam. <laughs> let's not pretend this movie is about people we know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, they have to get synchronized. Is his excuse <laughs> it's for, so for weird. also getting? I can't deal with that. Part. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, Ellie, re- or rather Claire, returns. And um, to me, also when he needs to get synchronized is when it gets really hard to tell who's who. Yeah. Once they are both yeah. but, obviously but abusing after... barbiturates, it gets really yeah. like who's who at this point. 
Yeah, you just said you just said you got uh, you got the. It's not it's not a if you can't beat him join him thing. He's he tries to get synchronized before he tries to clean Elliot. Really? Because I thought he it was it's after. not it's not until after Claire returns or as Claire's returning that uh, that Ellie's locked Bev in the apartment because he calls he calls the. Uh, the super of the building pretending to be, but I thought there was Ellie another scene like keys. after after the um, the award ceremony where he says he's going to clean him up, and then like, maybe and maybe then, there and was. that's right around the time that Beverly goes off and gets no maybe no I, I don't know that. I'm getting turned around I maybe I I, that. Not, anyway, I don't know I'm, I'm not sure I'm right I'm getting a little turned about or turned around about the chronology of the film just like I am about who's who at any given time at this point yeah. I found yeah. this part of the film very confusing and I understand that's the point but it also made it really hard to watch the last mm, whatever half an hour or whatever yeah. it was kind of hard for me to watch I was really starting to zone out a little bit because it gets so confusing about who's who it really does. It really does at that point, especially because you know uh, he goes. He he convinces the uh, the super that he's uh, he's just lost his keys and needs to relock the door for him uh, before he leaves, uh, so that so that Ellie won't notice that he's left, or so that yeah, Ellie won't notice he's left basically. Mm. Um, so uh, he goes back to Claire. She she gets him some pills. Um, and, uh, you know, he wakes up much, much clearer, but while he's asleep, she finds the instruments he's had made, and we haven't talked about these yet, and they are... Disturbing. They, they, are, they are disturbing. They are, they, they look like M.C. Escher. A lot of these yeah, look like yeah. their body, Actually, they look you know like their body parts like. of Xenomorphs. Looks, not, you're not thinking M.C. Escher, you're thinking, um... Yeah, yeah, not M.C. Escher. Not, uh, yeah. What's his name? Uh, Geiger. Yes, H.R. Yes. Geiger. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Apologize. Uh, that's, I was just mispronouncing H.R. Geiger uh, when I said M.C. Escher. I think. <laughs> uh, no, H.R. Geiger. The Xenomorphs. They look like they look like bits of the Xenomorphs, really. Yeah. Or or thrown off. It actually kind of looks like. Yeah, it does actually kind of look like somebody took a, a mold of that in metal because like yeah. the, that that one yeah. thing looks like the legs off of the uh, face hugger. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So he's uh, he's uh, commissioned these from an artist uh, who says. Who says, aren't there companies that would actually make these? And he says, no, we're, we're, no one we're, understands We're too me. radical. We've always been too radical. We're too radical. We've always been too radical. Which I think is always a sign you need to stop working with someone. Yeah, like, I'm really <laughs> weirded out that the artist decides to go with it. Except for if well, he, maybe, he decided... But then again, he puts it on display in his thing, so maybe at the same time he's like, this yeah. is really artistically cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's his justification. It's solely his justification. Um... He puts it on this display. Now, uh, Bev does try to use those uh, in in one of their <laughs> yeah. observation things, um, and that is the only moment where it looks like they're losing their medical license. Is that Bev uses the little finger cut yeah, thing like, on a woman? That's such a weird moment where it's like, oh my gosh, this is the end right here. Yeah, and that moment's made all the more weird because, and and we see them earlier, but for whatever reason, I'm really bewildered. That all of the scrubs, are whenever they're in those observation things, are blood red. Bright blood red. Well, I noticed that, and then I started thinking about it, but I've seen that before. Okay. Um, and the place I've seen that before is yes. Star Trek movie. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, which one? I can't remember, but there's some surgery scene, and they're all wearing bright red scrubs. Were there? Yeah, that, yeah it's just, it's very weird to me that they're in bright red. I think. Right, red scrub, scrubs. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I don't, I don't understand why scrubs are any color. Uh, <laughs> right? Why, why are they? Why are they be, that god awful blue? I don't know. Yeah, but but why why would they be? You know, one of the reasons I think you would need scrubs. One one of the functions they could serve is you know you can tell when people are bloodied. Yeah, that's um, true. Except the, and with these the scrubs, you that they're, they they. They're like, oh man, I just I gotta wear this thing out after surgery. I gotta go out on the town. I don't want people to notice. Maybe they never wash them. Maybe oh, they never God, wash them. This is them. getting terrifying. <laughs> and so, so this makes it so they don't have to. It's like, you know <laughs> what laundry costs would be like for this place? So we just don't. Yeah, exactly. No, that no, that, that um, part so, is a bit so weird. He, but I think that was a stylistic he, choice to make it more yeah, creepy. Yeah, I'm sure. 
Yeah, and it is. But I have seen creepy, so especially much film or something scene. where there were red scrubs. I swear. No, I I feel like you're right about it being a Star Trek movie, but I really yeah. I've not seen many of those, and I haven't seen any of them in a very yeah. Long time. That's kind of um, my problem too. Yeah. So anyway, um, hopefully they're in the Criterion Collection. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. The Wrath of Khan has to. Be. <laughs> oh, probably. Um, so this is the one moment where it looks like things are going to fall apart for them on a professional level. Uh, and, and, and rightfully should, because just the bringing yeah. of those things in there probably should have been enough to in their yeah, career. Yeah, why, why, because like, why that woman didn't try to stop Well, and the, and the other guy is obviously a doctor. It. There's another doctor yeah. in there. Why he waited Well, the implication I feel out. is that I feel like he didn't, uh, no one noticed except for the woman, the nurse who's handing him the instruments. But the way he, no like, one was but really... the way he yells at her about the instruments, everybody had to notice at yeah, that you'd point. Think, you'd think someone would have looked at him. Like, ooh, we need to call this off. Yeah. So they decide that it's it's about time they started moving into research, pure research anyway. So uh, they're both kind of okay with losing their, their practice license, which is... Uh, Oh yeah, they Weird totally. Um, what's but, the word I'm looking for? They're not they're like totally, um, they're not okay with it, but they're justified. Yes, justified. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, they yeah. justify by saying, yeah. "Oh, we were going to move into research anyway. We've always wanted to be yeah. pure research anyway." Yeah. Um, so uh, Bev leaves after that conversation. Uh, steals the instruments back from the artist who has apparently made another set because I can't imagine that the police that or the it, medical board or whoever would yeah return yeah. them to the sky um, so he steals them in um, possibly his, the his least, instruments the probably the saddest theft ever because he just walks in there and picks yes. them up and the lady's like you got to stop and she, he's like they're mine and then walks out yes it's like we were like <laughs> she's very, don't have police in this she town? doesn't put up a whole lot of she doesn't put up a whole lot of effort. Yeah. She's like, well, they were creeping it. me out anyway. Yeah. And they, right yeah. there, so. <laughs> so, uh, they were, they were created as instruments to, uh, to perform or to work on mutated women. Um, which, you know, is one, one thing this movie does well is, is we're not really sure where the rest of the movie is going to go. And when when we first open, when we first find out about these instruments and and what he says they're for, um, it's pretty uh, pretty clear he's going to try to hurt Claire with that. Yeah, yeah, you do and get into this thing where like you start yeah. thinking, man, is he going to start operating on people? Yeah, yeah, and fortunately, fortunately, he does not, which is good because I like. Yeah, Claire. me too, and <laughs> I don't want to see her operated on by yeah. a face hugger. So, yeah, so he goes to visit Claire, and she gets him more pills, and then he falls asleep, and she finds the instruments, and then she, you know, she asks him about him, them when he wakes up, and at this moment, you know, still, I'm still, you know, biting my lip, waiting for him to just attack yeah. her at this moment, and he said he doesn't know what they are. He, and it, it's not, I mean, maybe it's just that Jeremy Irons is too good an actor at this point. But it's not clear. I I really feel like he actually isn't supposed to remember that he. Yeah, has it's. A, it, I felt the same and, way. I really feel like the idea is like yeah. he is so out of it that he doesn't remember having these things made. Yeah, yeah. And then he uh, he sees them and and he he says that they are tools for separating conjoined twins, which gets us into the final portion of the movie and uh, and really also lets us reminds us again not that i'm sure it's necessary yeah. that that's really more or less the main theme of the second half of the film is what he has yeah. become obsessed with separating himself from his brother yes absolutely absolutely um yeah so so he goes home and he finds ellie completely strung out fully dressed uh kneeling in the shower, and he himself is, is pretty strung out at that time. Um, and they start to be the same person completely yeah. for a little bit. Um, <laughs> following each other around, walking the exact same way, uh, dressed in the exact same clothes. Um, 
there is a moment where I thought maybe they thought they were both Bev, uh, because when he when he offers him cake because it's their birthday, um, and orange pop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ellie asks for ice cream, and Bev's response is that Ellie forgot to pick it up at the market. So it's for a brief second I thought maybe they both thought they were Bev, but it's very it's very clear almost immediately after that 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 Ellie still knows he's Ellie. Um, which would have been a, an interesting place for for that for that to have gone. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah. Um, <laughs> and then they have their uh, they have their cake. They have their cake. They eat their In cake. The awesomest way to eat cake ever. Out- Yes, always, always shoving cake into your face. Yeah, like break it in half with your bare hands and then shoving it in your face. Yes. It's a great way to eat cake. Which suggests it was a rather stale Yeah, cake, probably not but... very tasty, but it might yeah. be it but might be left over from that, that congratulations now. party from like a couple of weeks before. <laughs> from from weeks before, at least. <laughs> yeah, well, thing. come on. I mean, they're both like strung out of their minds. I don't yeah. think they're actually like cleaning house. Yeah, so they're they're at the office, I guess. Yeah, or they have um, gynecological equipment in their apartment. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, it's weird that that suddenly they're the same place. Um, because he's in the shower, and that suggests that he's at home. But then, yeah, then they're, they're in, the, and there's no there's no sense of travel. There's no sense of of change of location. Yeah, it's weird. Um, it, that part is weird. So they're. Yeah, they've got these surgical tables, and he lays Ellie out, and Ellie tells him not to forget the best part, um, and 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 rolls up his sleeve to accept another shot of heroin or whatever. So yay, mm. um, uh, and and Bev breaks out his instruments, and and we start talking about uh, Chang and Aang yeah. again, um, and how you know which which one who is. Uh, yeah, so he pulls out his uh, pulls out his instruments and goes ahead and separates himself from his brother, which basically um, means cutting open Elliot. Yeah, he he slits open his chest yeah. quite quite profusely. Yeah, and there's lots of blood. Um, and... Though actually, you know, all we really see is him. Yeah, well, I mean, there's you see lots of blood of when times. he wakes up later. Uh, yeah, yeah, when the, he wakes that up body later, is very... bloody. Is what I meant. Yeah, it's very. It's it's very interesting. Uh, Bev wakes up, and he's in another another bed. Yeah, he's sleeping um, on the other one. And he's coming to, um, and he doesn't seem to see Ellie. Yeah, he, in kind of a yeah. mirror of when, the earlier scene when Ellie Ellie wasn't aware Bev was at the at the at the ceremony. Uh, and he's Ellie 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 just repeatedly, and he walks outside, and it's really interesting to me. I don't know. It's there's very much an insularness to this film, and the fly is kind of the same way. Uh, the fly all 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 takes place, or ninety percent of the fly takes place inside uh, the apartment where where uh, Jeff Goldblum's character lives, um, and since it's it's also about his descent into madness, like I said, that movie does for for body horror what this movie does for psychological horror in the way. In a, in a lot of the same ways, um, but this movie is very, very inside. Everything. The only real scenes that take place outdoors are when they're kids, uh, walking through their neighborhood and having that discussion about water yes. sets, and this very brief moment at the end, where he separated himself from his brother, and we think for a moment maybe he's you know finally achieved independence. And he walk, he gets a shower, shaves, uh, packs a bag, walks outside, gets to a gets calls, to a payphone, uh, yeah. calls Claire, but never says anything. Hangs up and walks back up, <laughs> back inside. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he he even like leaves his bag outside. He just walks back in, uh, strips down in his boxers, cuddles with Ellie, and we fake the play. Yeah, and. So he can't. We kind yeah. of I guess. know that he's gonna die too. Like he's laying down to die, but we, we you know, yeah. we don't see that per se. But yeah. So it's uh, 
It's a very weird it, it, ending. Yes, to a movie but too. I mean, it's a weird ending to a weird it just movie. Kind of stops. And I, like I said, like yeah. if you're really into these kind of really weird films, it's definitely a good one. But like, since yeah, I don't really love weird films like this, it didn't really suit my taste very well. Yeah, he doesn't achieve his goals. I guess is is where I where I have a slight problem with the movie. But at the who, same who time, who doesn't achieve his goals? He doesn't. Well, Bev, Bev, he, he separates himself. Oh, but himself then he's not independent. Yeah. Physically is his idea, but he's still not. Yeah, independent that's a little bit sad because like it, 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 obviously he would be and going obviously to jail it's supposed or to be a downer. Yeah, but like yeah, you would hope yeah, that at that it. point. But I mean, he killed his brother. It's a downer ending, whether or not he achieved independence or not. Yeah. But you'd, I'd almost rather see like the police coming in or something like that, where he's not yeah. dead. Instead of just... he's independent, but it required him to murder his brother. Yeah, and this is where this is where we get to the mirror of the the true story this is based on again, where they're both you know Ooh. barbiturate withdrawal and just kind of die. Uh, there's no suggestion in the in the actual events that that at least from what I've read that one of them murdered the other, especially not for the uh, the reasons. Well, yeah, but I here. mean, like I can see that have. I mean, you know, you hear about this weird. Yeah, you, they found these two dead gynecologist twins and you're like oh, I gotta write a story based on that and then you just yeah, use yeah, that no, as no, like the final like the way it's gotta end kind of thing and I can see that um, but yeah I would have yeah, liked it I, I, I'm certainly glad that reality doesn't get in the way of yeah. the story <laughs> yeah because if, if um, it did the story wouldn't happen but yeah yeah. it's just I would I would like to see Bev achieve some amount of happiness. Yeah, because you really do feel a little bit more for Bev than you do for... I mean, Elliot's basically a sociopath throughout the film. And not really a likable character, but Bev kind of comes off as likable at times. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it's because he's he's browbeat to an extent. But... But yeah, he still comes off as more likable than his brother. And... I would like to see him rewarded. Even though he's just... Well, I'd like to see him... Maybe not rewarded, but I'd like to see him happy. Yeah, like achieve the goal yeah, that he have, a, have yeah. at least a moment, a smile on his face. And as he's, police he's on his way. Like he's on his way as he leaves, and he still yeah. doesn't. Yeah, he just goes back. And you know, maybe and that's kind of ultimately, ultimately the point. We can't. Maybe we can't. Maybe that's what the film's trying to say: is we can't kill the uh, the the lesser halves. So. Of our personnel, of yeah. ourselves, and we can't we can't move beyond. You know, you can still you can you can eliminate your problems, but you can never separate yourself from them. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, I could I could definitely uh, see that yeah. as a point. I mean, yeah, like I mean, the film. It's kind of interesting because the uh, you know last time we watched Sid and Nancy, which is supposed to be theoretically an anti-drug film, but this film is a way better anti-drug film than Sid and Nancy is. As far as yeah. like, wow, these no. people lose, just lose it. Yeah, and they completely lose yeah. everything. This is this is a tragedy. You know, this is a Shakespearean tragedy, really. Whereas Sid and Nancy, Sid and Nancy wasn't a tragedy because no one was... They were never really on top. Yeah, right. They were... In, they were. They didn't fall. It, they started at the bottom and they got a little bit Yeah, and, but these guys started at the guys, top and these ended guys, up... These guys... Well, yeah. dead. Yeah. In their apartment. Yeah, this is very much... Yeah. And unfortunately, their moments of ecstasy are, are well, on barbiturates, but <laughs> at least... Uh, at least Bev had that moment of ecstasy of, of, of getting past, you know... He's spending his time completely with Claire. Um, and then, you know, it all falls apart when he decides he needs to actually separate himself. And that's what drugs do to you, Pat. They yeah. get you crazy. So kids, don't do drugs. Don't but do drugs. If you're a kid, why, for God's sake, are you listening to this podcast or watching any of the movies in the Criterion Collection? Yeah, don't. Also, if you're a kid, if you're a kid, don't watch this Yeah, don't this watch movie. this one. Basically, don't watch any it of is, them. It is... It is rated R for yeah. a very good reason. But, <laughs> no, this, um... <laughs> That's our so PSA. So, yeah, this is a very well-acted movie, uh, very well-shot yeah, movie. Yeah, the movie um, is... Very realistically, is... you know, for having having one actor play two roles, 
that have so much interaction. It comes off. It, uh, it's very it well done. Very, the, it's yeah. a very well done movie, it's but very, because again, from my taste, it just does not match my taste at all. Yeah. I didn't like it that much, but I can definitely see if you like this kind of thing. Yeah, it's a great. I very, I very so, much yeah. liked it, and I, I like, I like eighties Cronenberg. Well, and, really yeah, as you know, we, um, we have different tastes about certain things, and this is definitely yes. one of them. It's good that we have different yes. tastes, Pat. It's good to be yes, different it is. people. <laughs> As this movie it taught means us, I don't have to kill you. Be a different person than another <laughs> person. Yes. I wish. I wish right. that they well, had for written listening. that at the end the same way that Sid and Nancy wrote "Rip <laughs> Sid and Nancy" at the end. Like, be a different person than another just person. Put that up. Yes. Always try to be a different person. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, cause it's uh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Anyway, uh, I think I think that it? kind of brings yeah. us to a close. So. Thanks once yes, again for listening to Lost in Criterion. Next week we're watching Catherine Hepburn in uh, David Lean's directed... Summertime, uh, yeah. Summertime. Is that really a, word, a single um, word? I thought those two words had to be separated. Uh, well, it's, a, we're, it's a single word for the sake we'll, of the we'll title We'll get into here. that next time. <laughs> I Grammatical don't think we really issues. need to get into that, but we'll talk to you. We'll talk to you about the film nonetheless. Yeah, Thanks for listening. See we'll see time. you again. and Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriteria at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriteria.com.